My name is Dr. Christy Drexler. We are studying the impacts of anthropogenic pollution and other impacts uh, on the communities along the New River, upstream, central, and downstream from Orange Walk. This, this is excessive organic uh, film that is, it, it, you see it naturally form, forming on top of uh, slow water. It'll break down over time with, with uh, bacterial action, but it's so thick, the, the system's overloaded. It's, it's tanks, horrific sediment. The Department of the Environment came and according to Kacha, they immediately stopped the discharge, but I still see it going on. Anytime you have water coming, you know, out of these out of these systems like that, it's going to be picking up a lot of oil. Any kind of machinery, and that includes the uh, the engines for the uh, for the towboats. We have two groups of uh, survey teams, two individuals. Here's Carlos, he's Hi, my Carlos. team member. Uh, and then Omar Castillo and Mariana Jimenez. We are uh, going to households that are pre-selected and uh, we are asking people their perceptions of impacts from the New River, living along the New River, how important the New River is to them. Uh, we want to understand perceptions of the New River and how useful and important it is to them and if there have been any changes, how that impacts them. So we're putting the pieces together as we travel along the New River and interview communities in the three zones. ¿Cuántos años ha vivido en esta comunidad? Desde el 84 hasta la fecha. Durante el tiempo que ha vivido, ¿ha visto cambios en el río? Sí. Sí. Porque cuando nosotros llegamos aquí, había mucho pescado. Ahorita ya se agotó el pescado. You're in Indian Church Village. En aquellos tiempos, cuando yo vine aquí, el río era riquísimo. Habían sí. miles de pescados. So the hardness is 250. pH is. 6.0 cyanuric acid 100 many kinds of, um, of materials will produce these these hydrocarbons that will accumulate as this film here on the surface of the water well it's essentially creating a dead zone and the dead zone is of course no good for fish and other kinds of things too so uh, it reduces the biodiversity of the of the whole ecosystem. It's it's essentially deteriorating the the whole system. So if you if you're concerned about maintaining the health of your river, maintaining the health of your tourism, it's a key issue because tourists don't want to come here to smell sulfuric gases and stuff. And the local people too. I mean, there's also health issues of breathing these kinds of things over the long term. So all those things need to be addressed. It's a holistic issue. Everybody has a has a, a say in this because this is a common resource here and uh, it's not just for industry and everybody has to share this 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 ecosystem and so we all have to understand what's going on and we all have to do our part in order to keep it in a, in a healthy functional state Thank you.
Right now we're passing through mini grass, shipyard and the fireboard. We have a pair of interviews to do there and we're going to mini grass. We're here in Fireburn Village and one of the things that um, our interviewee mentioned is that he has seen in the past two three years more riverside clearing and here is a sample of some of the clearing that is occurring. Definitely we can see by the evidence that it was some, some sort of herbicide that was used. Um, our interviewee also commented that there is rice farming uh, just south of the village and there is aerial spraying. That's definitely something we need to look at. And his concern was, is, is that spraying for the rice farming going to affect the, the river just in front of their community? Which are very important questions that need to be answered. Mm -hmm. 